Welcome back, guys. It's AP Gains. We're going to show you the most clutch deck in Pool 1 for your Marvel Snap journey. We're going to call it the 5-6 Swing. I would say it's got one of the higher win percentages, if not the highest win percentage. You can do lots of stuff with it. And one of the great things about it is it gives you variety in how you play your opponent. Because obviously there's so much RNG in this game. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know what your opponent's going to run. You don't know what cards you're going to draw. You don't know what the land's going to be like. And this just gives you so many ins and outs, ways to win left side, win mid, win right, switch things up. Now, the 5-6 five swing, five, swing deck is mainly comprised of four cards. Um, and the other cards you can kind of use at your discretion. Um, Nightcrawler, he moves, which plays really well with the Spider-Man Miles Morales, which was our last one-minute combo video, essentially giving you great value for a five uh, power with a one cost. Plus, you know, having people move around is always fun. When we add in Craven, Craven, you can either move late game to get a bunch of power, or you can just standard move your crawler to give him some power if you want. And then Heimdall is the center of it all. When you play him, you got six, eight, and it moves everything to the left. This is what gives us that variety. Now, I'm going to just walk into three battles. I'm just going to click play, play the first three battles that come up and show you exactly how this deck plays. I actually recorded the gameplay before I recorded the intro to this video. And the gameplay is actually very interesting because the first two are perfect examples of the variety of ways that you can win. And then the third one is a special surprise. We actually got terrible RNG. And our opponent did something a little special that I think you guys are going to love. So make sure you stick around and see that. Um, but yeah, the deck is pretty simple. Uh, essentially, what it allows you to do is pick where you're going to play early. And if your opponent plays into that, you can either swing everything to the left or you can continue playing right side or mid and uh, adjust your play style accordingly to make sure that, you know, whatever they do, you have the highest percentage chance to win. And the reason this is the most clutch deck is because oftentimes you can bait your opponent into thinking that they're going to win by being spamming the I'm losing or whatever or taking a while to play or, you know, maybe just generally looking like you have no idea what's going on. They overinvest in areas where you're not even going to pay much attention. You swing everything to the left and you get a nice little clutch 5-6 swing. Uh, let's show you some gameplay. All right, so very early on, you want to make sure that your Craven is in the leftmost slot. Now, I currently have a New York here, which is perfect because you can move on turn six. You always want your Craven in the leftmost slot because, as we know, Heimdall moves everyone to the left. You're going to stack up a couple here, a couple here. Hopefully, you can bait them into doing something like this. You know, they're overplaying the right side of the map. Uh, got lucky, got an Iron Man played for free here. Uh, not going to complain about that. Let's, I don't know, throw down a Punisher and see what happens. All right, so we're going to continue the onslaught with the Jessica Jones. And since we're going to be moving this card, um, the back-to-back -back turn rule won't apply. But, you know, we can't play Heimdall till turn six anyway. So I guess Jessica's just going to have to be cute all by herself. All right, so Blue Marvel's going in mid. And this is actually one of those fun scenarios where he's starting to overturn or overload the left side. So what we can do is instead of playing our Heimdall and allowing everyone to move here, because we can take advantage of land, because let's be honest, land changes every deck in this game. You're never going to play a deck very standard. What we can do is make sure that we have our priority cards moving over here to New York so that when we actually throw in our Heimdall, we know that he's stacking up this left location but with an Iron Man and a Jessica Jones, plus two being moved here, making this a 2-6 Craven or 2-7, it looks like, because we have a, a, a man, a blue Marvel. Man, I can't speak today. Hopefully we swing this over and we see what happens. Let's even snap just to put the pressure down. All right, he's playing into it. He's completely abandoning the right side, so it looks like he knows what we're doing, but let's see if it pays off for him. A Sentinel comes down. And his highest investment here, right, is completely getting dwarfed. And we've basically sacrificed this. Now, we could have realistically played the right side of the map straight up. But this is what I love about this deck is it gives us opportunity to choose what we want to do, right? If he plays, you know, into the right side, we can always swing it left. If he plays into the left side, I wanted to show us swinging it left. But realistically, we could have just played some cards over here, one mid, one right, and been totally fine. It gives us that flexibility. All right, so we're into our second match, and let's see what happens. After turn three, room in a random location, nothing crazy. Let's just move on to turn two. We got an on reveal happening twice in this middle zone, plus he's giving us a gift from the gods of snapping early. 
So let's give them a nice little thumbs up to let them know how fun and juicy we are. Now, we always want to try to bait them into snapping early because that means we can either be a pussy and retreat and, you know, maybe we'll lose two. But if we really know that we're going to win, we can throw out another snap and win eight. So it kind of gives us a six a six cube swing. It's our best chance of winning. All right, after turn three, add a random card here. That should be interesting. I don't know. Let's throw down a Punisher. This is an ongoing, so this won't happen. All right, so again here, he's playing very, very strong on the left side, which means we can have either the option to swing him left if we think that we can win the matchup because, you know, his cards are out here. I wish I had Angela, the S-tier card for sure. Or we can just play the right side of the map, right? We could 100% just play the map over here. We'll see what happens. All right, so a relatively uneventful game. We haven't, you know, done our main strategy, and it looks like he's going to completely ignore this side of the map. He did us a favor, moved our Nightcrawler. Always nice to have Miles Morales around. And then let's just say we throw in an Ant-Man over here. I probably should have played Sentinel. I can't believe I just wasted that energy. Big brain AP gains move, as always, but we'll see what happens. All right, so he's got a Gamora here, which is actually pretty strong. 12, we don't... We don't really want to fuck with that. I'm going to be 100% honest. So here's the dealio Mishmelios. If we place this here, we're going to go up to 10. He'll be at 10. This will swing over, give a plus 2, so it'll be 12. Plus it will be a basis of 2 plus another 3, so that's 5. So we'll have a 17 here. This will move over, so we'll have basically our 11 points here. And let's see if we can swing it on him. And snap, just for memes. Always make sure you put I'm losing. <laughs> All right, a white tiger. Awesome. That's actually awesome. Moving double white tiger over to the right side. Ant-Man's going to give him a big boost, but what's the boost going to finish out at? 16. As we remember, we did our math, and we should have a sweet... Well, I guess I was bad at math because I said 17 instead of 18, but I guess, you know, that's the thing about watching me play. It's like I'm always off by one because I never went to elementary school and I don't know how to count. But another successful swing to the left. Um... As you see here, you know, we would have been tempted to maybe match him right. I know Gamora is a big strong thing here, but, you know, the land always plays a crazy, you know, wild coincidences happen sometimes. You never know what's going to happen. So we definitely escaped a double white tiger, swing it to the left. That's why this is the most clutch deck. All right, so we played one, two matches. It's into the third. Uh, most of these deck videos are probably going to include just, I'm just going to go into a lobby and show you the three first games. After each turn, give cards here plus one power. Always awesome. Let's do this. Get some value here. Now, what I like about this is because this power is going to grow along with this card. So if I don't have my Spider-Man, I can just wait and let this Nightcrawler build power. Right? We always want our Craven on the left. Plus, he'll be gaining a power a turn. After turn five, we'll see all cards give you a plus two power. So we're going to miss out on big power from our swing. But what we can maybe do is put two cards here, two cards here, and then rue our swing. All right, fill each player's hand with random cards. That's always interesting. What did we get? A bunch of useless stuff. Your opponent gains control of one of your other cards at this location. Not not great. Um, I don't know. Let's just do this because if we swing, that'll become a four. Get some value out of the hand. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Obviously, these will continue to grow as well. All right, so really unfortunate. He played left side. He actually had Electra taking out a lot of power there. So that was actually a fantastic play by our opponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Ooh, it's turn four. That's kind of risky. I'm going to Jessica Jones here. Now, this gives us a couple of options. We can either leave this here, have 10 power, or we can swing. So he's going to Doctor Strange, which is actually great for us. He's going to move a lot of power to the right. This is going to multiply. And what we can do is that gives us a little bit more leeway to swing left. We'll see how it plays out. All right, so I'm going to Kazar and then whatever this... I actually don't know who this is in Marvel lore. Apologies, don't crucify me. All right, so he's actually throwing down a Nick Fury, which is a card that we don't see very often. So he has a bunch of variety in his turn six play. So we're actually kind of screwed here. All right, so we don't even have our Heimdall, so we can't swing. So this is kind of an example of, you know, sometimes you just don't draw the right cards, um, and there isn't a ton that you can actually do. He's going to snap because he knows that we're scared. Uh, let's do this. This will do 7. This will give us to 17, and they'll, you know what? I'm not even going to do the math. Let's just hope it works. Worst case scenario, we lose 4. Nothing bad there. All right, he's going to play. Ooh, he's actually going to Heimdall. 
Very interesting. He did the Heimdall for us. Um, so I guess this is actually a perfect uh, third game because it shows that sometimes you can get bad RNG, but the deck's still good, right? Like, we were actually not in a terrible position. I'd say we had a 25 to 30% win chance there. But he actually showed the power of the 5-6 swing, the Heimdall extraordinaire, used our own tactics against us. Kind of a perfect ending um, to the cards. Yeah, to the deck. Hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe for more You know, combos. We'll do one-minute combos every so often. We'll show you some cool decks. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you right. All right. As always, I love you. See you later.